Hi, good morning, everyone. So I'm going to make the assumption that everyone could see my screen, and I just want to say hi and thank you for coming to this um, webinar this morning. Um, I want to be efficient with your time, um, and so I'm going to go quite quickly. I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time talking about ZP, but I just want to, first of all, um, I asked the question, what is food sense? Um, and I suppose I can answer the question because I've got one here with me. Um, but just to know, just to know today, even, there may be a bit of talking, but there were definitely three live demos, and I will describe that there will be, you know, what those three live demos will be. So food sense, if you're not familiar with it, if you are, great. Um, I've got one in my hand at the moment on the camera. This is a sort of, we call it a food sense generation four. It's a handheld device that I really, it, it's not an opinion, it's a fact. You'll see it today in the demo. It's very good at rapid test. You'll see Rot Solron. Um, Within the next 30 to 45 minutes, we will have definitely tested three samples. Um, it offers a much lower cost per test. And um, when I say cost per test, I think what's happening is some people are not testing at all. And when I say test, I am specifically talking about um, ginger and um, chilies today, or ginger products and chili products today. But these are the kind of sensors that we use. You know, they offer a much lower um, per, uh, per test cost. So it's rapid, it's lower cost. When I say lower cost, I'm talking about HPLC. Um, we own an HPLC at ZP. We use this to help validate our technologies. Um, but you can see me in a little sort of thumbnail video there. Um, the HPLC stands about, you know, up to my waist if I put it on the floor. So it's it's no small instrument. We are describing objective testing. So I think um, people would like to truly know the pungency of, let's say, a ginger product or ginger shot or the, let's say, hotness of a chili sauce or um, chili powder. Um, I think in some industries, actually, the only testing that's really going on is, um, I mean, the posh word for it is organoleptic testing, which is, you know, as you know, basically taste testing. So it's also very transparent. What I mean by transparency is um, if you're getting either your ginger products or your chili products tested by HPLC, you'll get these kind of certificates of analysis, or maybe you just get an email. Um, and what it means is that you really have very little, other than um, trust, you have very little objective evidence of actually that that was the true capsaicin or true ginger, um, ginger roll, sorry, concentration. Um, and I'll describe that transparency today, but you'll also see in the demo, and when Solron does um, these demos later on, you are going to very clearly see um that um all the data goes to the clouds and you can actually see the raw data it's also very traceable um some people are going to um or, or are using these products in manufacturing and in quality systems and you'll see that we have the sort of time date of test who did the test the raw data of the test as well because of this cloud connectivity so it's very good in what we call incoming quality control and also outgoing quality control and with incoming quality control, I mean, the fact that it's rapid test and also for outgoing quality control, rapid test is an important um, function. And we'll be testing, as I say, some gingers today. And we'll also be testing um, some ginger shots, I should say. And we'll also be testing some um, Apollo sauce as well. But this rapid test actually allows also process control. Something that we've realized is that if you're trying to make a ginger shot or a chili sauce, for example, the ginger shot can be, you know, um, blending powders, the ginger, I'm um, sorry, the chili sauce could be blending chilies. Um, I don't think there's much process control going on because essentially you need to be able to measure the incoming material. You should have a set point of what you're aiming for on the outgoing or the, or the actual product. But then if you have rapid tests, you can basically have a connection between this is what I've come coming in. This is what I want to make. And then you can test during the process to make sure that actually you come to the point that you want to come to. And I will describe that um, today. So what you, what you will see today is um, we'll be taking this food sense meter in a bit. You'll see Solron um, click in one of these um, sensors um, and then Solron will be petting on. We'll do some Carolina Reaper um, powder because Carolina Reaper has a kind of reputation for being around a million. I mean, I know people say, you know, the powders are 2.2 million, but it's not always the case. Um, ginger shot testing, um, there's plenty of people um, making ginger shots. Um, myself, I realized that, you know, when you buy um, ginger shots and you taste them over the year, you will find that the um, pungency changes. So I think there's a problem with almost process control um, in that kind of, um, I don't want to call it industry, but in that production. And then we'll also do some Apollo hot sauce testing as well. This is if you ever watch um, YouTube and you see celebrities eating um, 
I think it's called hot ones, and they're eating these chicken wings, and they're all weeping and crying. Um, this is the kind of sauce that they're actually um, putting on those um, wings. So we'll also be testing that today, only because um, some of you may not know us. But this is but welcome. We're ZP. We were launched in 2014, so we're in our tenth year. We are ISO 13485, so we're more. Um, when you look at what we're doing in the food ingredients industry, and I'm holding one in my hand now, this is much more akin to what's called an IVD, an in vitro diagnostic. If you've got anyone in the, unfortunately, in your family or your circle of friends that's got um, diabetes and they're um, pricking their finger and testing blood, they get a rapid result and it's quite easy to run those instruments. Um, and that's exactly the kind of technology that we're at ZP traditionally doing in the medical industry but now we're translating it over to the um, food ingredients industry. We do a lot of development manufacturing. We have a fairly large facility and we're primarily in the UK and Norway and we're quite an international um, team. So just on support wise, um, everyone gets personalized, personal online training. Now, I used to think this is really important that everyone got um, some training. We do do it. Um, but this is the if you could see my hands, this is the manual that now comes out with the instrument. I think the manual somewhat reflects that. Trainings become a little bit more redundant these days. We do get come online and give everyone a bit of training, but you find out by the time you get online with them, they're already using the instrument. And I think um, the manual somewhat reflects how simple this instrument really is. So it means you can roll it out to non-experts. Um, weekly webinars, we do get questions in. Um, we do do weekly webinars, they're every Wednesday. And that's definitely something that's um, happening. And then we have these monthly webinars as well. And even, the monthly webinars are always updating with kind of, um, you know, questions come in and we sort of, you know, tweak these um, webinars to make sure that um, everything's good. Just to say that we will have a, um, I know that says February here, but we will have this webinar again on the 27th of March. So today is a, the 28th of February. So we do, as I say, every, one every month. So if you've got any colleagues you think would benefit from this, um, this link will be sent to you later on and they can sign up and come along to that next month. And we do mix it up, you know, it's not formulaic. This is the Food Sense Generation 4. Um, I think the Food Sense Generation 4 is less like a scientific instrument or more like a sort of um, an iPhone in terms of its look, its ease of use. Um, it's small, it's easy to use, it's uh, more accurate than the previous generations, it's cloud enabled and it's multi analyte. That's an important point to you because I suppose I haven't mentioned that, but today we're going to try and do, well, we're not going to try, we are going to do three samples and two, let's say, markets, one of them being ginger testing, one of them being um, chili testing. And we're going to do it all off one instrument. So that's a pretty powerful thing that this one handheld instrument can do, um, chili, ginger. And at the moment, we also have something called total antioxidative capacity. You do hear, you know, a lot of nutraceuticals saying, oh, you know, high in antioxidants. But really, how many of these things are actually being tested? So, uh, but we do have the capability of, you know, um, validating those claims there's a quick video playing at the moment um, and you can see my hand there for scale so that is the device um, the other video that's playing here is um, Solrun actually testing the device and running the app and then in the bit they'll run the assay and all the data goes to the cloud you do not have to look at raw signal in the cloud but there's a cert there's a good transparency to this instrument that on the phone um, you'll see it today that we will definitely get a result, but also know that the result is backed up by um, the operator, the time, the date and the raw signal all going to the clouds. So, you know, we've got a kind of permanent record of um, actually what happened on that instrument. As you can appreciate, that really helps in kind of quality systems. Um, and that's a little instrument itself. Um, here we're just illustrating um, what actually comes in the um, box so if you were to um, open up the box and um, the first thing that's kind of um, comes at you is actually the manual itself and as I say the manual is um, pretty slim and it's no reflection of the quality of it it's literally just because um, it is these days um, so straightforward to open it so it shows you what comes in the box the instrument um, you get these strips of sensors now I know but don't worry, there'll be a photo in a minute, but I just hold a strip up just here. Now these strips of sensors, you snap them out. In fact, I've got one singulated here. Um, and these are the sensors then that go into the meter. Um, and you also get some buffer depending on whether you're doing chili or um, ginger. But you'll see the role of the buffer um, in this as well. Um, 
the question came in this morning and I'll answer it directly several times today. But this um, these devices are you drive them through Bluetooth connection to a smartphone. Um, and so there's two QR codes. One QR code will take you to the Google Play Store. So you can run this off an Android phone and the other one will take you to the um, Apple App Store. So you can run it off an iOS system. It just tends to be that a lot of people in Asia tend to have um, uh, more Androids. Let's say in, uh, when I say Asia, I should sort of say in India, in the USA, it's a bit of a mix. But we we basically look after both operating systems, um, Android and Apple. The nice thing about Androids is that they can sometimes be lower cost than well, not sometimes. I think quite frequently. Um, there's a there's a little clue in the video at the moment because when you see those strip of electrodes, there, there's a QR code there, and that that will become significant um, in a short while. That's the device itself that obviously comes in the box um, and then some buffer as well. 500 mils, milliliters of um, buffer. All right, I'll go forward um, and there's the strips. Um, so, as I say, now you can watch the recording later on because anyone who's registered and here today, you'll get a recording. But this app, if you scan this app off your um, Android phone, it will install the Sense It All app on your phone. So um, if the question, the question came in and I say it again, then you can definitely run this off the Android um, phone um, and you can also run it off the um, Apple phone. When we originally started, we were doing Apple, but um, my business partner loves Apple. I'm much more of an Android guy. So in the end, we've got, we've gone for both. Um, you can now when you when you open up that app, this is a multi analyte system. So when you open up the app, I mean, I can even do it off my phone now. You can scan this code. And if I again hold up these strips, you can see the code is on the strip. That code will tell the app, oh, this is these are chili sensors. You need to run the chili assay. If you're in possession of ginger sensors, there'll be a ginger QR code on them. And you will scan that and it'll say, all oh, right, OK, I, these are ginger sensors. I need to run the ginger assay. And if you've um, got um, TAC, total antioxidative capacity sensors, then there'll be a QR that code there um, for the TAC. Now, just out of interest, if you watch the recording later on, you'll be able to install those, install the Sensi All app on your phone, and you'll be able to try out those t uh, those QR codes by just scanning your screen or something like that, and um, you'll be able to see that you can. So it is multi-analyte. Just out of interest, um, ZP, I did mention at the beginning, we're ISO 13485, so we're contract developers, contract manufacturers of um, electrochemical biosensors, mostly for human health. So we do have quite a range of biosensors. Um, so with time, we're actually moving some of these, more of these sensors onto the platform. So we're working on glucose at the moment, pH, um, lactate. Um, we're also working on alcohol, um, sodium, because people are always interested in sort of saltiness of things. Um, sulfite, because sulfite is a, it's a preservative in wines. Um, malic acids, because um, I think malic acid kind of appears in things like apple uh, juices and um, in the US, they call it hard cider. In Europe, they call it cider, but it's kind of alcoholic uh, apple juice and also fructose, which is kind of um, important. Well, it appears a lot in food. So you can see that we are able to or starting to translate some of our, um, let's say, medical sensors over to the food industry. Um, we do get asked whether we can do turmeric. Um, so, in, in, sorry, I say turmeric. Um, the active ingredient in um, turmeric is actually curcumin, and I'll discuss that in a bit. We also get asked about pepper, and when I say pepper, I it's sometimes a bit of a confusion. People, some people think mean chili peppers. Uh, I'm actually talking about black and white sort of peppercorns here, um, where the active in these is actually um, a molecule called piperin. And then the other one that comes up is garlic. Um, there's two molecules that will give you the pungency of garlic. That's allicin and dialyl disulfide or DADS. Um, so what I want to say is um, we are very capable of doing curcumin. That's quite an easy one for us to do, but we haven't done it yet. We would probably do it with an existing food sense user and use them as a sort of, you know, I don't want to as a beta tester, you know, so sort of, you know, so do a, a slow release, let's say, with somebody who genuinely was already a food sense user um, and wanted to start testing um, turmeric and, and curcumin. 
I think that when you look at the sort of ginger shot world and people making ginger shots, um, turmeric, I think, is also one that people are kind of are quite interested in because of the health um, benefits there. Um, pepper slash pepper in is also the one if somebody is an existing food sense user, then we'll probably be able to release them the, to be our sort of, um, beta testers on pepper in. Now, I will say on garlic, it's the hardest one. We have done work on it. And the only reason I put a red cross in is not because we can't do it. It's just the other two are so much easier than the um, last one. So if people said to me, oh, well, I really want to actually start doing turmeric, then I'd be very warm to it. And if they said I want to do um, pepperin slash pepper, I'd be very warm to it. And if it was garlic, I'd be say, we have to really discuss this. This is a lot um, tougher. Um, you're going to see this in a minute anyway. Um, but I just want to describe the workflow. So the workflow is um, every sensor has a QR code. Um, the sensors fit the meter and you'll see um, you will see Sol run do that in a minute. The nice thing about the way these sensors go in, they just click in quite so easily. Um, you don't have to align them up or anything strange or worry even to worry about liquid getting into the device. We've really thought all that through. Um, the, the hardware is driven by the app which you can get from the Android store or the Apple store. Um, the sensor goes onto the meter, the sample goes onto the sensor. The meter is told what to do by the Bluetooth um, connection with the phone. Um, the meter gives the data back to the app and the app passes the data to the cloud. You never have to look at the cloud, but just out of interest, when you're using it, every time you do a result, the, actually the result is saved in the cloud and you'll get a, a result, result on your phone. So if you're measuring chili, it will say Scoville heat units. Um, and if you're doing um, ginger, then it will say mix per liter, which is the same as parts per million PPM. Um, and I've got the word here, transparency, because actually the raw signal is all sent um, to the um, cloud as well. So it's just really useful to you because we have people in like India, for example, using this and they want some advice, you know, is it working? Um, and the answer is yes, it, it's working because I can go up there and we can see the raw signal. We can explain to them what they're actually looking at. Um, and we can explain that, you know, that the shape of the raw signal tells us what the molecule is and the intensity or the peak heights tells us how much there actually is there. So this is qualitative and quantitative. And when I say they share the data with us, they it's their data, it's behind their username and their password. But actually, they don't even have to send me the data. They can just use my email and invite me to look at the data. Um, so there's a sort of, you know, they can share it with their own team and they can also share it with external teams as well. Um, and so there's, you know, good support through that sort of cloud connect, uh, cloud and um, enable us. I think one of the things we've realized is that there's a, you know, we're not, it's not a criticism, it's just a fact that people are making um, these kind of products. You know, it could be a ginger shot, it could be a chili sauce. Um, but I think I think the biggest problem they have is manufacturing repeatability that sources come out with different um, hotnesses and um, ginger and ginger products come out with different pungencies. And it's basically linked to the fact is that the supply chain is a raw material, you know, and so you can't expect to have, um, let's say you, you, you add in by t by mass 10 percent ginger powder every time or by mass um, 10 percent ginger powder every time. You won't have a repeatable product coming out of it because it's based on the one assumption that that those incoming materials are repeatable themselves and they're just not because obviously growing conditions um the time of the year the shelf life you know all sorts of so many um parameters will affect those kind of natural products so you know now i, I will talk about ginger for a second but what i'm talking about equally applies to um chili products as well Ginger has a molecule in it, um, one of them is called gingerol, for example, and um, these gingerols, um, there's lots of isomers of them, but they're responsible for that um, perception of pungency or hot heat um, when you're doing ginger. So what we say to people is, if you're blending a product or making a product, you need to test that product and tell us, uh, when I say test, you need to, you, you'll test it, and that will give you a, essentially a definition or a characterization of how much um, pungency is in that product. So what I mean by that is you'll have a product, you'll measure it and you'll see how quick that is. And for example, it's 6,000 parts per million. That means you can then um, measure your incoming material. I put it rather high here at 32,000 ppm. But if your set point is 6,000 ppm, 
or your output is 6,000 ppm that you want to achieve and your incoming is 32,000 ppm, then it's simple to just calculate that. In fact, you can just essentially dilute it. So that's a simple one where, you know, you've got a very high and you just dilute it to get you to the pungency. But I understand that dilution can actually lead to a loss of flavor. Um, so one thing I would say, so I'll talk about blending in a minute as well. But what I would say is that we also um, train or encourage people to not just dilute all in one, you know, say, oh, I'll take 15 percent of um, this concentrated ginger and I'll take 85 percent of water and I'll just add them together. We say, no, do an incremental addition of the water, come up slowly so that you can actually follow the process. And that's why it's important to have a rapid test, because otherwise you can't do this kind of um, add test, add test and come to the what we call the set point. So we do encourage um, a if you want repeat repeatability, you have to measure something that you actually like the taste of. Define how much um, total ginger rolls are in there and then measure your incoming material and then essentially in this simple example you can just dilute to taste or dilute to pungency we do understand that actually dilution could also lead to kind of you know if you over dilute it can feel quite watery um so i think actually what's happening more is actually people are actually blending they may have a source of now i'll call this um ginger here but i can also be talking about blending um chilies as well in order to get to the actual flavor that you want so you have one that's high and that's one that's low you have a set point. So my high is 32,000 ppm, my low is 4,000 ppm, and my target is 6,000 ppm. And it's basically just simple math. So actually, I need 7% by volume or mass of my high, and I need 93% by volume or mass of my low. And when I blend those together, I'll come to the actual answer of 6,000 ppm. Please understand that I don't think this is happening that much because people don't have access to rapid test. I think they're actually doing like I say, the posh words organoleptic testing, but they're just basically tasting and trying to get to a repeatable product. But of course, you can't really remember what that tasted like six months ago. Um, and also, even if you saved samples, um, I can understand that freezing samples is probably good. Keeping them in the fridge sample is, is good. But we do notice that if we get ginger shots in, um, the ginger oil is oxidizing over time. And so the pungency is definitely going down. And you can also see it because the, the shots are darkening up. They're getting darker in color. And that's a, a good sign that um, everything is oxidizing in there. Um, manufacturing chili sauces. Um, just out of interest, uh, we measure chili powders. We measure chilies. Um, we also measure um, oils. And we also measure um, oleo resins. And we also measure, um, as I say, sauces as well. But the sauce is the same. You don't have to take a artisan approach to making a chili sauce. Um, this is experience. Um, this is a product that's tested on our um, food sense um, and it advertises itself as having 91 percent pepper X in it. Um, basically, we can calculate what the theoretical hotness of um, that sauce is just by knowing the ingredients. So if you're a food sense user, um, you should be able to, if you can measure your incoming material. So if the pepper X here has a reputation for um, it's it's dry weight hotness is what they call 2.6 million Scoville heat units. It's wet wetness is about 260,000 Scoville heat units. So when you've got 91 percent of it, then you should have a theoretical hotness of 236,000 Scoville heat units. And so we can measure that and help them basically reach a more uniform um, product. You never do reach your theoretical, by the way, because in processing, capsaicin, again, is an organic molecule. It's going to get degraded during the processing. Um, but I think chili, chili and ginger products are kind of treated very artisan um, or they are backed up with people using high pressure liquid chromatography. But HPLC does not scale well, it's very expensive. So I think there's actually a lot of artisanship going into these products and it could come to on to a more scientific basis. Um, something that we'll demonstrate to do is today as well is Carolina Reaper powder. Carolina Reaper has a kind of reputation for being quite hot as a chili and as um, a powder. Um, most of the testing on these kind of products actually takes place on HPLC systems. HPLCs are expensive. It leads to under testing. People really very periodically make a measurement. The results are slow. Um, the process is actually quite long um, and the turnaround time, you know, can sort of I think the turnaround time is actually 
weeks rather than days and even hours. And there's no sense of what that what's going on with the HPLC system unless you're doing it yourself. Food sent to much lower cost, lots of tests, fast results, very transparent in terms of you get the data. Just out of interest, one of the problems I think with HPLC is that people are doing one test by HPLC. And that really assumes whether it's ginger or whether it's chili, that that sample is homogenous. It's not homogenous. You know, it's a natural product. In fact, I don't have the microscope pictures here, but if you look under any of these products under a microscope, you'll see that they're full of just simply different colored bits, different sized bits. Um, so it's not homogenous. So the, the first assumption, which is wrong, that it's homogenous, you need to sample that lots of times in order to get an average essentially results and you can also then get a relative standard deviation to understand your variance or your spread in Scoville heat unit or ginger um, or ginger all across that material but anyway when you do send it to HPLC there's a lot of processes going on that you're not necessarily aware of unless you're doing the HPLC yourself what you're certainly not aware of is actually that the real signal from this is a chromatogram and they're turning that into um, either PPM for ginger oil or into Scoville heat units for um, chili. They're doing it via calibration, but you have no sense of when that calibration was had or what the kind of actually the goodness of that calibration curve really is. So it's expensive, it's not transparent, and it takes too long. And it means you can't do online real time uh, process control. Um, so, you know, often people actually just have an email, but if they do have a certificate of analysis, you know, these are all very good. It tells you that this is run by the AOAC method, 995.03, and it tells you that this was 11,636 Scoville heat units. But you have no real sense of the um, of what happened in the background. People really take these on trust, and actually they're quite wedded to that these must be accurate and correct. But when you ask them, well, you know, um, do they, you know, do you know when it was last calibrated, etc.? Do you know what the repeatability is if you sent the same sample again into that lab? They've really no idea. And what's kind of interesting is, and it's particularly pertinent to Carolina Reaper, for example, is that the methods, the AOAC method, and I don't mind if you also use the ASTA 21.3 HPLC methods, they're not actually validated for the hotness of some of the materials that people are actually testing them on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, stop my screen in a minute. I'll turn off my mic and I'll turn off my camera because we're going to do three demos. I'm not quite sure the order. I think it, it may be approximately in this order. But we're going to do some chili powder, um, ginger shot, and some hot sauce. But you know, both sides of the demos are, are, are pertinent to um, everyone in some ways because you know you can just change the word capsaicin for ginger, and we're telling a very similar um, story um, here. So let me stop um, sharing, and let me um, turn off my um, camera and my. Um, yeah. All right. So my name is Solran, as uh, Martha was saying, and uh, I will run you through some quick demonstrations uh, and I will start off with Ginger. So first off, I'm going to show you what the app looks like. So uh, you have the app in the phone um, and uh, where you can connect to the FoodSense device. So the FoodSense device is a fits inside the palm of my hand, just like the one Martin was showing. I will insert a sensor here. You can also pull it out just so that it's easier for you to clean it, which is convenient for people working in the lab. But I will start off by inserting a uh, ginger sensor into um, into the device. So I'll just put, uh, push it up and uh, there are some pins connecting to the electrodes of the sensor. Then I will continue by um, showing you what you, uh, your next steps in the app is. So here I've actually already connected to the ginger assay, but if I click that button right next to the ginger sensor, I can uh, scan a QR code, which is over here, and it will choose the ginger assay. And you need the correct assay in order for you to have the correct settings for your sample or, or your analytes. You can also change the test settings. Um, so the sample ID, here is ginger, it's just a name that I choose so that I can easier sort through my data in Julie. I will show you that later, just how it arranges and 
um, and so forth. And then the cluster name is the food sense demo in this instance. Uh, and you always um, like to keep track of your data, keep them in the same folder. And um, it's uh, Martin also oftentimes makes a point out of uh, that the cluster which you name is, um, you can send that cluster to us if you need help with the data. Um, but uh, each cluster, uh, you need to provide us uh, the uh, access if so. So um, just keep that in mind. And then the operator ID is just my name uh, or the initials for my name. So um, I will show you how quickly you can you can prepare the different samples. So I will go to a close up view. So here's a ginger shot and I have some ginger buffer here. So I will start by adding 900 microliters of this buffer into, into the vial. Um, we're going to make a 1 to 10 uh, mixture ratio just because one to, uh, because this ginger shot is not too pungent. So 1 to 10 is sufficient for, for this. So I'll pipette into it like that, add it to the vial just like that. And then I will add the ginger shot sample as well. So I'll leave it there. And then I will add 100 microliters of the ginger shot, which then gives me a 1 to 10 mixture ratio. So um, here's the shots. I'll pop it like this. And then I will show you up close what it looks like. So here, uh, here is the uh, solution with a buffer, and then I'm pipetting in the uh, ginger buffer, no ginger shots, just like that. And you can see that it's uh, uh, not that homogeneous yet, but it's quite liquidous, so it will mix pretty fast. And then I'll cheat by using a vortex. We oftentimes use a vortex because it gives us a uh, good mixture really fast and it's very repeatable in sense of um, mixing. So just like that and I'll show you and now we have a homogeneous solution. So my next step then would be to pipette onto uh, onto the sensor. So uh, yeah, I've changed the test settings. I will now go to assay and here I'm instructed of what's my next move. So I will choose the dilution factor of 10. I can choose different dilution factors. Um, I've already placed the sensor onto, onto the, into the device. I mix the sample. And my next step now is to apply 50 microliters of the sample to the sensor. So I'll show you that in the screen right here. So from the sample I just prepared, I will pipette 50 microliters onto the electrodes of the sensor, just like that. And then I will click Start in the app, Start Measurements. So now the uh, app is running. So what it's doing now is running through something we call cyclic voltammograms, and it's assessing the peaks and, um, and in that sense, finding the concentration of uh, the ginger oil in the sample. So this, uh, you can also look in Julie, uh, which, has, uh, which is our on clouds database, which also analyzes the results where you can um, look at your raw data and really get the control. So the results come back to you like this in micromolarity in milligram per liter, uh, according to your preferences. And it also says upload complete, which means it has uploaded to Julie. Um, so I will show you what that looks like. So um, here is uh, Julie. I just need to sign in, and I and the and my sample has been uploaded. So it's the ginger sample on top, um, and now you can see that I I named or I labeled my, my uh, test sample or after a test ID, Ginger, just so that's easier for me to sort through the data, find out which is mine. And it's also 
um, sorted according to dates and time. So you will be able to differentiate between it anyways, but it's just easier for you to sort through it. And it's also um, giving the operator ID. And if you click the edit mode over here, um, you can also fill in more uh, details if you want to. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, connect more details to your sample. So here's the uh, the cyclical tomograms of your sample. So it's according to your uh, sample in particular. And there you can see uh, the difference between um, the different uh, samples you're testing and really get a control of your raw data, which a scientist like me appreciate. But sometimes you're just in the lab and you prefer just uh, getting um, the quick uh, results like a milligram per liter. So it's uh, it's for your preference. So I'll click done and then I will move on to chili sensing. So these sensors are one time use sensors because these analytes are organic uh, molecules, which very much like the uh, surface of the sensors. So uh, it attaches to the surface. And if you would test it over, it will get more and more pungent, like you will get more and more um, of the molecule attached to the surface. So you won't uh, get the real number for your sample. So one time use sensors and uh, you'll get the correct results. So um, what we will do now is we'll click again that button next to uh, Ginger sensor on the app screen, because then we will um, scan the QR code and I'll scan the QR code for Chile. Um, now you see that it's chosen the Chile sensor assay. So different settings as we're now working with a uh, different sensor. So what I will do now is I will just quickly insert um, the sensor into the device, just like that. And then I will uh, click the test settings because I want to change it to uh, Apollo. So now I'm going to test a sauce called Apollo. And I also need to just quickly prepare it. And the reason why I want to prepare it online for you guys to see is just to show you how easy it is to prepare your samples. And of course, that um, that varies with what kind of samples you have. Maybe you're actually uh, testing fruits and you then have to uh, chop it up and use some more preparation time. But um, but we will uh, test the sauce, which is fairly quick. So what I will add, start by doing is just pour some of the sauce into a Petri dish, just like that, just so it's easier for me to pipette it. And then um, this sauce is very pungent. So I need to prepare a one to a thousand um, mixture ratio. So what I will do is I will add 40 microliters of the sauce to 40 milliliters of the chili pot buffer. So I will pipette um, 40 milliliters. So bear with me. Um, so I will add 10 milliliter and 20 milliliter. Uh, so 40, uh, 40 milliliter equals 40,000 uh, microliters. So 40 microliters of the sauce to 40,000 microliters of the buffer makes up a mixture ratio of um, 1 to 1,000. So now I've added 40 milliliter of or 40,000 uh, microliter of um, of the chili pot buffer into uh, into the centrifuge tube. And the next thing I will do is I will add 40 microliter of um, of the sauce, the Apollo sauce. All right, so I'll just use it by pets and I will pet it just like that. And then I will show you up close what it looks like. So here is the centrifuge tube. Here's the pipettes with uh, the sauce in it. I'll just add it. 
just like that. And then as you can observe, the sauce is falling down to the bottom and it now looks a bit blurry, um, but I need to mix it so that we have as much of a homogeneous solution as possible. The reason why I say as much as possible is because these sauces and also when we when we um, test chopped up chilies, they're chunky, like there are bits and pieces in there. It's not as homogeneous as some of the really fine powders. And that's okay. Like if there are some particles in your solution, that's okay. The capsaicin, which is the pungency molecule, is being extracted into um, the buffer. And that is why it's important to use these chili pot buffers from CP because um, it's being um, extracted into the buffer uh, and we're testing the buffer. So if you can see, we don't have the uh, sauce at the bottom anymore. Sometimes if we have uh, powders and a lot of particles, it will still like accumulate at the bottom. But um, you can see that it's like a bit chunky and you see some particles floating around, which is okay. So what we will do now uh, is we will uh, go to the go to assay again, uh, and this time we have to change the dilution factor to one to thousand um, to reflect the uh, reflect the mixture ratio that we are using. And then I will pipe um, fifty uh, microliters onto the surface of the electrodes. So just like this. And then you can see her. Uh, I just pipette from, from down in the solution. And then I pipette it onto the sensor. Just like that. And then I will click start measurements. So start measurements. Again, it's uh, running cyclic voltometry for for the chili uh, sensors. For some other sensors we have, it might be a different electrochemical measurements, but this is cyclic voltometry. So um, I will show you in the app um, what it looks like. And it's a uh, pretty short measurements, about 30 seconds. And in that time, it's also analyzing the results and uploading it to Julie. So here the results are coming back. Um, so we get the results in micromolarity, PPM, parts per million, and scoville heat units, which is um, very uh, a very familiar unit for uh, chili sensing. And it also says upload complete, which means it's been uploaded to Julie. So let's look at the Julie thing. Um, so I need to hit refresh just so I can see my data. And here, Apollo pops up, and we'll go to the Apollo data, and here you can find the peaks and the analysis that's happening, and also, it's also stating the school heat units here. So you can see that's 80,000 school heat units here as well. So um, now we will uh, test the next sample. And for this sample in particular, I've cheated a bit. Um, so we're going to test uh, Carolina Reaper, uh, a powder. So this is very pungent. Uh, so I just want to give it a bit more time to really extract that capsaicin into the buffer. And that's why I've already prepared it um, beforehand. Um, and uh, it's five milligram in 50 milliliter. Um, so it's at one to 10,000 dilution ratio. So let us sensor um, into the instruments, just like this. What I really enjoy about this uh, new food sense uh, generation four uh, device is that we have these cartridges, which makes it very easy to handle the sensors without having to touch the surface of the electrodes or, um, yeah and easy to insert and it fits really well and connects to the uh, connects to the device really well. So uh, again, I will uh, change uh, the test settings uh, to reflect the sample I am testing. So this time it's Carolina Reaper. I'll just uh, write an abbreviation. 
Um, and then I will click go to assay. Uh, I will click on the 10,000 uh, dilution factor. And again, I will pipette 50 microliters. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, 50 microliters onto the electrodes of the sensor. So. This is my sample. And then. I will. I pet it onto the sensor just like this. And then I will click start measurements as we did for the others. Just like that. Um, I will wait for the uh, sample to finish. Um, it's uh, 16 seconds left and we expect this powder to be more pungent um, than what we've seen for the others. And that's why we uh, did a higher dilution ratio um, and it's also to give the same environment um, to the to the molecules we're working at. Um, we uh, are using this chili pop buffer, uh, which is an electrolyte, and yes, gives the same environment for for our samples, and so that it doesn't vary for for um, yeah for the different samples and sauces that we're testing. So as you can see from the result screen here, it says one point. Four million uh, school heat units, so quite pungent. And it also says upload complete. So let's look at the Julie day. So um, this is our Apollo data. Again, I'll hit refresh. And our Carolina Reaper data pops up here. And here you can see the curves. And you can see that uh, the curve is quite uh, characteristic, uh, which is characteristic for capsaicin in particular. Um, so you can observe that we have the same uh, molecule going from uh, the different samples. And also it states the skull heat units to be 1.4 millions. And um, as I said, uh, we're in a cluster called, uh, called Food Sense Demo. Um, so here are my different devices. I can also rename those, but um, here I've uploaded uh, different data uh, over time. And since I'm using the same cluster for these three samples, they all group into, into the same folder. If I would use a different cluster, it will folder up somewhere else, which might be practical if, I'm, if I want to um, differentiate between the different um, different samples I'm testing, but now I want them all to be in the same cluster and they're, um, uh, I can uh, uh, see them apart uh, with the names, but also according to the dates. So I think we're back to you then. Yeah, perfect. Well, so thanks very much. So I think um, I will sort of wrap up quickly now because um, we've been going about 45 minutes, but in that time, you've actually seen us do three tests, prepare two of those samples and run all three of them. And I think that really kind of accounts for at least some of the things we said, which is that was simple. Um, in fact, when I think about it, you know, what did we show today? We showed rapid test, definitely. We um, we didn't discuss cost per test particularly, but when you look at the simplicity of the equipment and stuff, you can get in a sense of, um, of it. It's objective. Tolron was showing you that, in fact, you know, we do have the raw data so we can give you a result on the on the phone and you, you, you know, you, that's useful for some people. And but sometimes you actually want to see that, you know, there's a certain transparency to this. Why are you saying that result is that result? Um, it's very traceable. Solon can tell you exactly where the data actually is. And that means, you know, this is a much sort of better tool for quality control, either incoming quality control or outgoing quality control. And you can see really that because we can do this rapid kind of measurement. Um, we can actually use it for doing uh, process control of actually making those products as well. So I think um, we'll essentially wrap it up um, with that. But I do want to thank you all for coming this morning. I do appreciate that, you know, your time is one of your most valuable assets. Um, but if you've got any questions, you're watching a recording later on, um, please don't hesitate to to reach out to us at um, FoodSense. So I want to say particular thank you to Solon this morning. Very special thank you to all of our guests this morning. 
And as I say, multi-analyte, rapid to do, um, chili and ginger today, um, also total antioxidant capacity. And I think as people are real users, then we'll be interested in hearing what else they want to add to the menu as well. Okay, thanks very much. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.